viewers all over the world, I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Uh, today, I want to talk about who is the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about Holy Spirit today. I want to talk about Holy Spirit today. Who is the Holy Spirit? Who is the Holy Spirit? And how does it operate in us? The Holy Spirit, how does it operate in us? John 6, 63, it says, it, it is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits, profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. So we can hear uh, that the spirit gives life, and the words that I spoke to you are spirits, which means the word of God is holy spirit. The word of God is holy spirit. When we are talking of Holy Spirit, we are talking of uh, the Word of God. That's what John 6, verse 63, it's saying. And it's life. Which means if you don't have the Word of God, you don't have life in you. You are still in carnal. So a carnal mind is dead. A carnal mind is dead. So we can hear uh, at John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. The Holy Spirit here is called again the helper. The helper. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Jesus was talking about his resurrection. He must go to, uh, to the cross and carry cross and die. After he die, go to the Father. When he go to the Father, he will send the, the Holy Spirit. And you know, at the time of Moses, uh, Moses was the mediator was the mediator when people want something they go to Moses and say talk to God talk to God as Moses and Moses go to God and talk to to God then now when the helper come Jesus is our mediator and this helper will be uh, helping us and there is nothing like that that you, nobody, you can pray for yourself and God will hear you because of this new covenant. When you are talking of covenant, we are talking of the covenant of grace, uh, the covenant of grace. This was prophesied, prophesied with many, uh, many prophecies. Like Ezekiel, Ezekiel prophesy about this covenant. Jeremiah prophesy about this covenant. This covenant of uh, of grace. It's like Ezekiel thirty six verse twenty six. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh. And give you a heart of flesh. You know, if you don't have a Holy Spirit, which means your heart is a heart of stone. If you have a, 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 a heart of spirit, which means you are a changed person. Jeremiah 31, 31, it was talking about the uh, a new covenant of Holy Spirit. I'm not talking of covenant, but I'm saying the covenant the covenant of spirit the covenant of uh of spirit 
I'm talking of the covenant of spirits. And verse 8. And when he, he is come, he will convict the world of sin uh, and righteousness and judgment. It will convict sin, conviction of sin. Then you cannot know sin without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will convict you. The Holy Spirit will help you to walk in righteousness, to know about the judgment day. The Holy Spirit knows that. So, if you walk in Holy Spirit, which means you stay away from sin because it will convict you about the sin. It will convict you about the sin. Which means you divorce yourself from this world. You stay away from uh, stay away from sin. And the sinful nature will not be in you. And you know when we are in Christ, you are now a new creation. Which means you are in a new body. You are now in a new life. You are now in a new life and all, all things are passed away. You are facing a new life. You are facing <coughs> a new life. Uh, and you can't have righteousness if you don't have Holy Spirit. You can't have righteousness if you don't have uh, Holy Spirit. You can't have righteousness if you don't have a uh, Holy Spirit. John 14 verse 16. And I will, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper. That he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit is our helper. He helps us to know the sin. He helps us to be righteousness. He helps us in all burdens. That is the Holy Spirit. He said, I will give it to abide in you. So your job is to keep him. Your job is to hate or divorce yourself from this world. The passion, the desire of your flesh. What you want, what you feel. You don't do what you feel, but you do what the word of God is, is feel. So the Holy Spirit will abide in us. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him uh, for he dwells in you and will be in you this cannot be received with the world those who are not born again it must be uh, received with someone who is uh, born again yes you must you will receive it when you are uh, when you are born again, not just a, a randomly person, which means you must give your life to Jesus for you to receive uh, the Holy Spirit. You must give your life to to Jesus for you to to receive uh, the Holy Spirit. Fourteen verse twenty-five, uh, John. These things I have spoken to you while being pre present with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach us how to be righteousness, how to abide in, in the word of God. It will teach us everything about God. The Holy Spirit teach us everything about God and he knows everything about uh, about God. He knows everything uh, about God. And he will teach you everything and bring you to your remembrance all things that I said to you. All things what Jesus said about the good news, great tithing, about the gospel. Because the Holy Spirit is about the gospel. It's about righteousness. It's about abiding in the in, in, in Christ. 
abundance of life. Yes, that's about the Holy Spirit. Peace, I leave you. Peace. Okay, peace, I leave you with you. My peace, I give you uh, to you. Not as the world give, uh, gives. Do I give you to let no your heart be troubled, neither let it afraid. Yes, you know, peace, it's a fruit of spirits. We were preaching about the fruit of spirit. Uh, we preach about a lot. You can follow that at YouTube. We are talking about peace. I preach about peace. It's a fruit of uh, spirit. If you walk in spirit, this in this spirit, there is fruit of spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22. I'm not talking of fruit of spirit because I preach about it. So you must walk in spirit. You must walk in spirit and the flesh will no longer have power uh, in you. The flesh will no longer have the power. This is the way to freedom, the freedom of sin, the freedom uh, to sin. You will no longer be a slave of sin, but the Holy Spirit will be in you. Your past is gone and forgiven. Your past is gone and forgiven. When you have the Holy Spirit, if you confess your sin, you will not, uh, you will not feel guilty. Because the redemption has come already. Jesus forgive our sin. He said if you confess your sin, he will forgive our sin. So if you confess your sin, don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty because your sin will be forgiven. Never a sin Jesus cannot forgive. You are now a new creation now. Old life disappears. Holy Spirit it will be in you, uh, which is the word of God. Invest in Holy Spirit. Invest in Holy Spirit. Invest in Holy Spirit. Which means you walk in righteousness. You walk in the truth. Jesus said, I'm the truth. I'm the truth. You must walk in the Spirit. Invest in the Word of God. And we are the witness of Christ because of the Holy Spirit. You can't be a witness of Christ without a Holy Spirit. We witness Christ. How can you carry his cross without the uh, without the, the, the cross of Jesus Christ? Yes, we will carry the cross of Jesus Christ and yes, we will carry we carry it because of our Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will build our spiritual life. We build our spiritual life for us to be to persevere or endurance in all perse in persecution. The Holy Spirit will tell you that no, you must persevere. This is a, this is seasonal. Uh, in whatever bitterness, the Holy Spirit will tell you to forgive. Wherever you want to be jealous, the Holy Spirit will tell you be humble. The Holy Spirit will tell you everything. Now you must pray. The Holy Spirit will tell you. It will build your life. The Holy Spirit will build your life. Because it will tell you everything. And it will teach you everything. That now you, you have a pride. Humble yourself. Now you must pray. The Holy Spirit tells you. You will hear it whisper in your heart. It will tell you you must fast. It will tell you you must give someone so and so such money. But you, you don't want. But the Holy Spirit speaks in your heart. You will hear it in your heart. So fill your mind with the Holy Spirit and renew your, your mind. Renew your, your mind. You can't understand the word of God without the Holy Spirit. We understand the word of God, the Bible, with the Holy Spirit. We understand the word of God with the Holy Spirit. If 
you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't understand uh, the Bible. It's not a novel. You need the Holy Spirit to help you to understand the Bible. So you don't just read like you are reading a uh, magazine. Uh, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16. All scripture is given by an inspirational inspiration of God and profitable to doctrine of the reproof for correction, for instruction and righteousness that the man of God may be completely thoroughly equipped for every good way. For all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So things of God you understand it with the Holy Spirit. Things of God, you understand it through the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you don't understand things of God. No matter what, you will not understand it. The things of uh, of God, you will not understand it. The things of of God. So you need the Spirit of God. Second uh, Peter 1 verse 20. Knowing this, knowing this first, that no prophets or scripture of any private interpretation. Uh, for prophets never came by the will of man, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. No scripture is interpreted, interpreted, uh, in interpretation of private uh, private you can't say this is your own liberation without the Holy Spirit it's not private it's, this is not the interpretation of uh, interpretation of your own we don't interpret the word of God with our flesh so you need to uh, submission to Christ submit yourself to Christ Submit your, yourself to Christ. You understand the things of Christ. If you want to understand the things of Christ, you must walk with the Spirit of God. God does not make a mistake. God is not a human being. And he will never say, I'm playing. And I was playing. No. He never says so. Say no to your desire and your passion. Or, oh, yes, what you feel of your flesh. Walk by the Spirit. Habitual, perpetual. Walk by the Spirit habitual, uh, perpetual, which is always use this Holy Spirit for. Uh, that's how God communicate with us. You know what God want, and in this Spirit, uh, this same Spirit, in this same Spirit, we have uh, gifts. Of spirits, it is one spirit. It is one spirit, but in one spirit, there's a lot of thing in this spirit. Uh, Acts one verse eight. But you shall receive power uh, when the Holy Spirit is come unto you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. You shall receive power, and you shall be witnesses. You will be witness of God when you when you receive the power of Jesus Christ. You can't witness Jesus Christ without power. And in this spirit, uh, we preach with the word, with, with the spirit of God, with the Holy Spirit. We heal with the with the Holy Spirit. We prophesy with the Holy Spirit. All people who do different work. All gifts, all gifts. If you go to Romans 12, verse 9, talk about this, the gifts of spirit, uh, first Corinthians. He talk about that. Different uh, gifts of Holy Spirit speaking in tongue, prophesying, healing. You can't be apostle without the Holy Spirit. You can't be a teacher, evangelist. The Holy Spirit is leading people, or even Jesus, the Holy Spirit was leading him. You know, at Matthew 4, verse 4, the Holy Spirit led Jesus Christ to go to the wilderness to fast 40 days and 40 nights. 
So, whatever we are doing, we need the Holy Spirit. You can't operate with the Holy Spirit if there are those church who don't believe in the Holy Spirit. It's not about we say we are Pentecostal church. No, that's not it. Holy Spirit is, is Holy Spirit. It came with the day of Pentecost, but it has nothing to do with us. Or we will say we will go to Pentecost. The Pentecost, it was never be a rule that we must, uh, each and every time we must go there. It, it happened to Israelites. We no, we no longer going to Pentecost, but because we have the Holy Spirit already, the Pentecost, the day of Pentecost, people were waiting for the Holy Spirit. So we now have the Holy Spirit. So their church, like Catholic, Anglican, they don't believe, they don't speak in tongues, they don't speak in Holy Spirit. How do you understand the things of God? That's why you hear they have uh, this position like uh, a priest. In apostolic doctrine, we no longer have priests, but we are priests. Everyone is now a priest. We are now from royal priesthood, which is Christ in the kingdom of God. So, but we no longer have that post to people who called a priest, archbishop. No, it's from a man. It's from a man. So we have spirits, gift of uh, spiritual gift in the Holy Spirit. If you have spiritual gift in Holy Spirit, and we operate with power of Holy Spirit, who teaches people how to evangelist, to be apostle, healing, interpreting tongues, speaking in tongues, angelic tongues. We are not talking of, uh, I'm just giving examples. Okay, I'm just giving examples. We are not going deeper about that the spirit of god is the doer of god is the doer of god he carried out uh, god's work the spirit of god carries out god's work uh, the word of god brings the word of god to us you will hear it the word of god feeling in you so which means you must open your heart for the word of God. Uh, and everyone was given a light to know God. Everyone was given a light to know God through the spirit of God. There are someone who say there's no God. I will know they are atheists. But inside they will know that there is God. They are atheists. People who doesn't believe in God. And Jesus was the word of God. Jesus was the word of God. Made flesh. John 1 verse 1. John 1, John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the, uh, was the light of man, that and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And the first of it says, But any, but as many received him to them, he gave them the right to become children of God to those who believe in him. And the other vision says, Are the sons of God. We are now sons of God through the Holy Spirit. We are now sons of God. We are now uh, 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 sons of God. We are now sons of God at the Old Testament. Uh, it's only men who are called. Uh, it's only men who were, if we had, there were 5,000 people. It was just men, women were not counted. Romans.
Romans 8, verse 5. To those who live according, uh, according to flesh, set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, things of spirit. If you live according to flesh, you set your things according to your flesh, what you want, what you feel. But that is not the will of God. And those who live according to the spirit, they will do the will of uh, God. They will walk with the word of God. For, for to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, mind is enmity against God. For it is not sub, subject to the law of God. No, indeed can be. To be carnal mind is death. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you do what you want, the desire of your flesh, if you don't divorce yourself to this world, which means you are not doing the will of God, if you don't abide in the word of God, which means you are not doing the will of God, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, is not his. So which means we must have the, uh, the spirit of Christ. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you don't belong to Jesus Christ. You don't belong uh, to Jesus Christ. And 13 verse. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if in the spirit uh, put to death, but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of body, you will live. Which means you die. You crucify yourself, your deeds, um, to the spirit, you crucify your deeds uh, to the spirit, which means you are no longer you who is living, but Christ is uh, Christ is living in you. Uh, Twenty-six verse. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for, uh, as we ought. But the Spirit himself make intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. The Spirit of God help us also to pray. If you don't know how to pray, you must pray in tongues. Which means you must pray this prayer. Which means you must ask God to speak in tongues. You must ask God to speak in tongues. That is gift of tongues. To speak in tongues, angelic tongues. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He makes intercession for us. It doesn't mean if you don't speak in tongues, God do not hear you. God will hear you. God will hear you. God will hear you. Romans 6 verse 4. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into that just and Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of Father. Even we also walk in the newness of life. The other version is say he was raised with the spirit of God. New King James Version. He was raised with the uh, spirit of God. Jesus was raised with the spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit fashioned us, created us, created a new heart in us, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit fashioned us, created a new heart in us. Uh, and the Holy Spirit know your pain, our groaning. He knows it. That's why he is an intercessor uh, to us and the Father. That's why he is the intercessor for us uh, and the Father. Then the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, is the wisdom of God. Is the wisdom of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the wisdom of God. And Christ is the wisdom. Is the other name of, of Christ. Wisdom is the other name of Christ. Is the other name of Christ. Wisdom. 
favor beyond your personality we get favor beyond our personality that is favor you just give your life to him you don't pay for it the spirit uh, and and it leads us into righteousness the holy spirit leads us into righteousness uh, favor beyond our personalities unlimited favor <coughs> favor beyond uh, beyond <coughs> your knowledge he will make you able. The Holy Spirit make you able. What you can't, you can. You hear when you want to cry, he can comfort you. When you want to, when you are in difficulties, it says you must endure. Then you endure. Walk in the grace. <coughs> God is love. Walk in the grace. God is, God is love. The Holy Spirit fellowship uh, with us. To be with us. It fellowship with us. It leads, uh, the Holy Spirit lead us and made us holy. We were made holy with the Holy Spirit when we open our heart and He knows everything about us. We can't hide anything else to the Holy Spirit. It gives you guidance, teaches you. The Holy Spirit will tell you, pray now. You must fast, read the Bible. You must give, do love. Yes, stay away from sin. The Holy Spirit guide us. This is the revelation of Christ. This is the revelation of Christ, the word of God, which is the Holy Spirit. This is the revelation of Christ. He carried his ministry through us. The Holy Spirit carried the God's ministry uh, through us. Yes. And the message of church is Christ. The message of church must be Christ, not the people preaching about the names of people. No, no, no. We must preach about Jesus Christ. The Spirit resurrected Christ from the dead. We read about it, Romans 6, verse 4. And uh, we witness Jesus Christ to preach Jesus Christ, understanding the word of God. And which means we must, when the Spirit of God is leading you, you understand the word of God. You don't preach uh, different from Christ. Yes, you don't preach different from Christ because the Holy Spirit will lead you. He is a spirit of, uh, which means if you preach wrong doctrine, you have a wrong spirit, not the spirit of Christ. Uh, yes, not the spirit of Christ. It helps. Uh, as for conviction of sins, convictions of sins, our identity in Christ, we know it because of uh, the Holy Spirit, the transformation power of God, and we we, we, we glorify uh, and magnify Christ through the Spirit of God, and it indwells in us. It indwells in us. It endures in us. And when you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. When you baptize, then you receive the Holy Spirit. Yes. So we say the Holy Spirit is not Pentecostal. No, that's not Pentecostal. So crucify your flesh with Christ. Crucify your flesh. Crucify your flesh. Is your flesh no ma must not have power in you. Your flesh must not have power in you. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. We do not receive the spirit of world, which means there is two spirits. That spirit of Antichrist is the spirit of the this world, which means there, is, uh, there are two spirits. These things we also speak not in words, which men is wisdom, teaches, but which the Holy Spirit, this is not uh, with the Holy Spirit teaches, the Holy Spirit teaches, but there is false doctrine. People who are teaching with the wrong spirit, the spirit of the world, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 
which when you have the spirit of things, the spirit of God, you can't understand the things of spirit if you are not spiritual, if you don't have the spirit of uh, God. You must be spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of God. For the for they are foolishness to him. No, that he no, because they are spiritual things the same. If you are <clears throat> a natural man, if you are not born again, you can't receive it. You can't understand the things of uh, Holy Spirit. You need to be born again and receive the things of uh, Holy Spirit because you are carnal. But who is spirit? Who is spiritual? Judges all things. Yet, yet himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of Lord that he, had, he may instruct him, but he has the mind of Christ. So if you want to understand the things of God, you must have the Holy Spirit. You must have the, the Holy Spirit. You won't understand it if you don't have the, the Spirit of God. You won't understand it if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Uh, Ephesians 5 verse 18 And do not be drunk with the wine in which is uh, dispersion but be filled with the Spirit speaking to one another in psalms and hymns spiritual song singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things uh, to go further in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, submitting to one another in the fear of God. In the fear of God. Wonderful teacher, counselor, comforter. We are talking of Holy Spirit. Wonderful teacher, counselor, the comforter. Uh, Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to it. The, the Holy Spirit. You must listen to the Holy Spirit. It talks in your, in your heart. The Holy Spirit talks in your heart. So listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You won't go wrong. Whatever you are facing, you will hear it. It whispers in you. If you are barren, you will hear that. Hannah waited for God and God gave him a child. Abraham waited for God and God gave him a child. So listen to the word of God. Listen to the word of God. It is not you who started with it. But there are people who went through it. First John 2 verse 27 But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. And you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same anointing teach you concerning all things, and it's true, and it's not a lie. And just as it has taught you, you, you will abide in him. Here is talking about the Holy Spirit, the anointing. Here is the, uh, the Holy Spirit. So if you hear someone say, today I've got a different anointing, anointing of this, anointing of this, the anointing, is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit come once. You can't have a different anointing. No. You can't have a different anointing. And now little children abide in me that when he appears we may have confidence and not ashamed before him and his coming. So you can't say today I come with a different anointing. No. Uh, that is a wrong doctrine. That is a wrong doctrine. That is a wrong teaching. That is a wrong teaching. And the Holy Spirit equips, it's a, it's a equipper. It empowers us. And we are living. You can't submit to Christ if you are not in the word of God. You can be submissive or living submissive when you are in the Holy Spirit. Yes. So be obedient. Disobedient, rebellious against God is from Satan. 
Live, live a, a, a godly life. You must live a godly life. Don't do what you want, what you feel. That is disobedience and rebellious against God. Against God. Moment by moment, listen to the Spirit. Moment by moment, listen to the Spirit. What does God say? The most important person is only Holy Spirit. Yes, the most important person in the world. You know, this world was created with Jesus Christ or God. So God sent his Spirit. That is the only important thing. And it will last forever. And it will lead us to eternity life. It will teach us to stay away from the sin. It will, it will let us... Uh, to teach us about the judgment day about eternity because you know that we are temporary so moment by moment listen to the Holy Spirit the only important person is Holy Spirit the only important person is only the Holy Spirit the work of Holy Spirit is the most is essential or important the, most, the work of Holy Spirit is the most important. You are nothing if you don't have the word of God or Holy Spirit. So be abide in the word of God. You know God through the Spirit. How do you know God? But if you don't, if you are not in the Spirit, you must be in the Spirit to know God. He regenerates the believers. The Holy Spirit regenerates the believers. New birth. He preserves the believers. How do they preserve the conviction of sin? It you, you will know. You will know. They I am unrighteousness. They I am self-righteousness. Now I must have a pure heart. Now I must confess. And the Holy Spirit adapt us. We adapted with the Holy Spirit. He is the author of scripture. All scriptures are uh, the Holy Spirit is the author so we must be in the spirit and you interpret the scripture uh, interpret the scripture uh, with the spirit of God and it gives us knowledge revelation understanding wisdom guidance and it anoint us the Holy Spirit is called anointed it edifies and sanctifies us. He enables us to understand the gospel. Walk with the Spirit, perpetual. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. Abide in Christ. My last verse. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 Or oh, you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, who is in you, who you have from uh, God, and you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your, in your spirit, which are God's. Yes. So our body is the temple of Holy Ghost. Do you have Holy Ghost? If you don't have Holy Ghost, which means you must go and be baptized and the leader will lay hands on you, then you will receive the Holy Spirit. Be baptized. Be baptized. Then you receive the Holy Spirit. You do not enter in the kingdom of God without the Holy Spirit. So which means you need the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will help you also uh, is your intercessor. Intercessor. And you can't understand Christ. That's why you see a lot of problems. People, they don't understand the things of Holy Spirit because they, they have got the spirit of this world. They have the spirit of this world. They are preaching wrong doctrine. They don't understand the things of God. They don't, they don't understand uh, about the about the, the spiritual gifts. They say they criticize about the, 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 the prophecy. They criticize about the gifts of prophecy. Which means they have great confusion. 
So we need the Holy Spirit to understand the word of God. That's why you see a lot of fight. There are people who have spirit of wealth and there are people who have spirit of God. So the things of God, we understand it with the Holy Spirit of God. So you must follow a, a good protocol. Don't allow Satan to use you, but let the word of God use you. Thank you so much. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Walk in the Holy Spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit. Stay away from sin. Jesus loves you. Amen.